Today for New Music Monday, we're gonna check out the brand new record from Childish Gambino, and it's called Because the Internet. Now, I'm not one of those people who's on his bandwagon who thinks he's some sort of untouchable person within the world of hip hop. His other records were good, but not great. None of them really blew me away, and I've never really understood the huge hype behind him. But at the same time, you can usually count on him to take a completely unique approach to the world of hip hop. And in terms of raw creativity, for the most part, this album is definitely in line with that idea. The album starts off with, well, let's just put it this way. The opening of this album album turned me off immediately. This track would have been much better in the middle of the record and it really doesn't start things off that well. It's really the production on this that's slightly off that makes it such a strange pick to lead the album. But once you get past that, the song is pretty solid in most aspects. The way he works across all the different soundscapes on the track is very impressive, but I will say that the hook on this song does get a bit old and repetitive. If I had to sum this album up very quickly, it would be the idea that there are fantastic musical orchestrations all across the album. But on so many of the songs, the lyrics and verse Verses get in the way and drag down these musical moments. I'm not saying he can't rap, nobody can argue that. But it's more the idea that the rhymes he puts on there tend to get in the way more than they help a song. And in a lot of cases, the verses are outright distracting. Also, there's a handful of tracks on this album that are, for lack of a better term, boring. The song World Star is beyond a sleeper. It's completely boring and one of the worst hip hop songs I've ever heard. And the track 3005 just shouldn't have been allowed on this record. The verse on the latter is painfully bad and it just doesn't fit with the music and rhythm in any way. Yeah, I get it. It's cool to rap off of the beat sometimes, and sometimes that works. But honestly, in this case, it comes off more as poor form or a lack of talent. And we know the latter isn't true, so it's just a poor choice. To me, the ideal balance for his talents and sound come on the first half of the song Shadows, as I think the first half of that track really shows all of the problems the other songs on the album have. When you listen to it, it's obvious. He's just trying too hard. He's trying to be too clever. He's trying to sound too cool. And instead of coming off as edgy, it just sounds messy and lost. Don't get me wrong, the music on almost every track is very, very good, and the production team overall did a great job in that area. I will say that the brief instrumental dial-up sounds like a complete ripoff of the Black Up album from Shabazz Palaces, but I suppose at some level that's not really a bad thing. I think what we have here is another case of a performer who just didn't have anyone around him who was willing to tell him when something didn't sound good. He had only Yes Men around him, and the album suffers because of that. And on the Buy It or Borrow It, I'll give this one a slight borrow it. Most of the music on here is definitely worth hearing. And there's a good rhyme here and there, so while it's not the worst thing you're ever gonna hear, it's just not that great. So that's what I got for you guys today, I hope you dug it. If you did, go ahead and click subscribe, leave a comment, click like, whatever you wanna do. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter right here, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>